One day, Boris Bear was working very hard. He was sawing logs into planks. Just then, Miffy came into the woods to visit. What are you doing, Boris? asked Miffy. I'm sawing these logs into planks, said Boris. What do you do with the planks? asked Miffy. I can make lots of things with these wooden planks, Miffy. Let me show you. Boris took Miffy into his house to show her what he had made with the planks of wood. I made this table with my planks. I made this bench with my planks. I even made these walls with my planks. I can make almost anything with wooden planks. Come and see. He took Miffy to his workbench. I'll make something special for you, and while I'm working on it, you can try to guess what it is. Boris put two planks side by side on his workbench. Is it going to be a table? asked Miffy. No, said Boris. It's not going to be a table. Then he put two more planks at the ends. Oh, said Miffy. Is it going to be a bench when you turn it over? No, said Boris. It won't be a bench. Then he put two more planks by the sides. I know, said Miffy. Is it going to be a box when you put the top on it? No, said Boris. It doesn't have a top and it won't be a box. Then Boris pounded in nails all around to hold it together. Then he took a round log and sawed off four pieces. He put the four round pieces of wood on the sides. Now you can see what it will be, said Boris. I know! shouted Miffy happily. It will be a little wagon. You're right, said Boris. It will be a little wooden wagon and it's nearly finished. Miffy jumped with joy when she saw it all finished. What a lovely wagon, she said. Thank you so much, Boris. Step into your new wagon, Miffy, said Boris and I will pull you home. Miffy carefully sat down in her wagon and rode home in great style. One day, Miffy thought it would be great fun to have her good friend Aggie stay overnight with her. So she asked her mother, Can I please invite Aggie to stay with me tonight? That would be very nice, said Miffy's mother. I will phone Aggie's mother to ask if that is okay. That afternoon, the doorbell rang and there stood Aggie with her little suitcase. I've brought a little present for Miffy, said Aggie. It's a drawing I made myself. Miffy was so pleased with Aggie's drawing that she went straight to her room and hung it on the wall. It's 
beautiful, said Miffy. Aggie began to unpack her suitcase. She had brought her nightdress, her toothbrush, a little picture book, and, of course, her own little teddy bear. What a surprise, said Miffy. It's almost the same as my teddy bear. Look! The two teddy bears looked exactly alike. Just then, Mother Bunny called them for dinner. And of course, their teddy bears were hungry too. Be careful you don't mix them up, children. Your teddy bears look almost the same. They are even the same colour. But I know which is mine, said Miffy. And I know which is mine, said Aggie. Good, said Mother Bunny. Mother served them a nice dinner. There were carrots, leeks and four delicious tomatoes. It smelt so good that the little bunny girls ate every bit. After dinner, it was bedtime. Sleep well, said Mother Bunny, so that tomorrow you won't be too tired to play. Miffy was feeling sleepy. But Aggie was not. I can hear strange noises, she said. That's the wind blowing through the trees, said Miffy. That's normal. It's so dark in here, said Aggie. I can open the door a little, said Miffy. I still can't fall asleep, said Aggie. So Miffy turned on her little bedside light and saw that Aggie was holding Miffy's teddy bear instead of her own. Now I see why you can't sleep, said Miffy. You don't have your own teddy bear. I knew something was wrong, said Aggie. Our teddy bears look the same, but each has its own special smell. Of course, said Miffy. My bear smells like me. And my bear smells like me, said Aggie. That's how we know which one is our own, said Miffy. So when each little bunny girl had her own teddy bear, each with its own special smell, they both fell asleep. and had beautiful teddy bear dreams until the morning. Miffy! Miffy! called Mother Bunny. It's time to get up. The sun is shining. But Miffy didn't get up. Her mother called again. Miffy! It's time to get up. Mother Bunny went into Miffy's room and saw straight away that Miffy did not look at all well. She felt Miffy's forehead. I think you have a fever, Miffy. I must take your temperature. She went to get a thermometer and put it under Miffy's arm. Mother Bunny looked at the thermometer. Oh dear, Miffy, you do have a fever. Miffy said, Oh, Mother, I feel hot and cold all at the same time. Yes, said her mother, that is a sign of having the flu. I'll bring you an extra blanket and some water. When you have the flu, you must drink a lot. I'll bring you breakfast in bed. Would you like that? I don't feel at all hungry, said Miffy sadly. If you're not hungry, then you definitely have the flu. Who can that be so early in the morning, said Miffy's mother. She went to the door. It was Miffy's friend, Aggie. Can Miffy...
Fluffy come out and play, Mrs Bunny? said Aggie. That's a lovely idea, Aggie, said Mother Bunny. But Miff is still in bed. I'm afraid she has the flu. I hope she'll feel better tomorrow and can play with you then. An hour later, the doorbell rang again. Mother Bunny opened the door and there stood Boris and Barbara Bear. They also wanted to visit Miffy, but of course, Miffy was still in bed. And Mother Bunny said, You know, Boris and Barbara, that the flu is catching. It would be best if you didn't visit Miffy today. Boris and Barbara sadly walked away from Miffy's house. Mother peeked into Miffy's room again and saw that she was still sleeping. Just then the doorbell rang again. Who could that be this time? said Mother. When Mother Bunny opened the door, there were Boris, Barbara and Aggie again. You know Miffy's ill in bed. Why have you come back again? We've brought Miffy some presents, they all said together. We want to make her feel better. We've brought some fruit, some apples, some grapes and some oranges. Thank you, said Mother Bunny. The fruit will be good for her. I'll take it to her straight away. Mother Bunny brought the fruit to Miffy, who was happy to have such thoughtful friends. She ate the apple first. It was delicious, and Miffy thought she was feeling better already. And sure enough, the next morning she felt much better. And soon was outside, playing happily with her friends. One day, Miffy came home from school. She went into the kitchen and saw that her mother was busy clearing the table. Hello, Mother, said Miffy. Hello, Miffy, dear. While you were at school, I had a visit from some friends. We had tea and biscuits, and I showed them the beautiful drawings you made. Now I must wash the dishes and put them all away. Shall I help you with the dishes? asked Miffy. Thank you, said Mother Bunny. But you must be sure to put everything in its proper place. The forks go with the forks. The spoons with the spoons and the cups with the cups. Miffy was happy to help. As her mother washed the forks, the spoons and the cups, Miffy dried them carefully. Then she began to put them away. There were four forks and Miffy put them in their proper place. There were four spoons, and Miffy put them in their proper place. But there were only three cups. One, two, three. Mother, said Miffy, there were four forks and there were four spoons, but there are only three cups. Oh dear, said Mother Bunny. Now where is that fourth cup? It's not in the sink. I'll go and look for it, said Miffy. Miffy began to search the entire kitchen. The missing cup wasn't on the oven or in the pot. It wasn't in the cupboard.
the missing cup didn't seem to be anywhere. I can't find it anywhere, said Miffy. Hmm, said Mother. Did I leave it on the table? The fourth cup was not on the table. But look, Mother, said Miffy. My drawings are on the table. Yes, said Mother. I brought them from your room. You can put them back, but make sure you put them in their proper place. So Miffy took her drawings and went to her room. She put her drawings on the shelf where she kept all of her things. And there it was. The missing cup was on Miffy's shelf. Mother! Mother! shouted Miffy. I found the cup! Oh, silly me, said Mother Bunny. When I went into your room to get your drawings, I had a cup of tea in my hand. I must have put it down on your shelf. Now we have four cups again. Thanks to you, Miffy. One, two, three, four. It was Miffy's birthday and her mother had baked a beautiful chocolate cake. She had set the table with party hats and colourful napkins and had hung the birthday decorations all around their little house. It was already 12 o'clock and no one had come to the party. Miffy wondered if anyone would come. She looked out of her window but couldn't see anybody coming. Where is everyone? she asked her mother. We sent invitations to all your friends, Miffy, said her mother. I'm sure they'll be here soon. Just then, the doorbell rang. There was Miffy's friend, Aggie. She was carrying a beautifully wrapped present for Miffy. Oh, hello, Aggie, said Miffy. You're the first to arrive. What a lovely looking present. I wonder what it is. You must wait until everyone is here, Miffy, said Aggie. And then you can open all your presents. Just then, the doorbell rang again. There were all the rest of Miffy's friends. There was Poppy Pig, Grunty, Boris Bear and Barbara. They were all carrying mysterious presents. Before we open the presents, Let's all have some birthday cake and ice cream, said Mother Bunny. They all agreed. Miffy was wondering what was in all those pretty packages. As soon as they had finished the sweets, the cake and the ice cream, Aggie said, Now you can open my present first. Miffy quickly opened her present. There was a lovely book and also a wooden plank. This is a beautiful book, said Miffy. But what is the plank for? You'll see, Miffy, said Aggie. Poppy Pig said, Now you can open the presents from Grunty and me. Miffy was surprised to find two more books and two more wooden planks. Barbara's present was also a book and two planks. This is really funny, said Miffy. I can read the books, but what can I do with these planks? Well, you'll just have to open the present from me, said Boris Bear. 
And then you will see. The present from Boris was only an envelope. But when Miffy opened it, she understood the joke. Inside was a drawing of a bookshelf. We'll all help you put it together. Soon Miffy had a beautiful bookshelf. All the planks fitted together perfectly. It's just what I needed, said Miffy happily. Now I have more space for all my books and toys. Thank you all for the wonderful surprise.